Traveling with Crushworth. On this episode, I'm enjoying everything historic Quebec City has to offer. Once the heart of New France, the city's downtown has an eclectic mix of Canada's colonial centuries, as well as the modern flares of a vibrant, culture-rich centre. With me as your travel guide, stroll the Dufferin Terrace by the Fairmont Chateau Frontenac, ride the funicular to Petit Champlain District, and reflect the plains of Abraham Battlefield. Adventure to the old quarter at night when the lanterns are lit for an eerie ghost tour. The next day brought a journey to honour the fallen from the 1759 battle that changed Canada's history. Airbnb nearby, my adventure began on Rue St. John, a thriving hub of quaint shops, markets, restaurants, and the St. Matthew's Churchyard and Heritage Graveyard. Built outside the fortified walls, homes and businesses flourished along the street, which, at that moment in 1737, was the King's Highway linking Quebec City to nearby Montreal. Quebec City's leaders destroyed the district in 1745 when the ramparts were changed, and in 1775 to prevent invading American patriots from hiding among the houses. Fires in the 19th century led to the St. Jean district being reimagined as a commercial district. It's a street visitors must see, not only because its extraordinary vibe offers a true French-Canadian experience, but its history is a window to a working class, not to be missed city. You've caught me uh, have, ha- having a rest on the steps of the Governor's Promenade. I'm heading down towards the uh, Dufferin ter- Terrace itself that runs by the Chateau Front Tinac, and from there I'm going down into the streets of Old C- Quebec. So c- c- come on, it's going to be great, and I'll show you all the sights. The Fairmont Chateau Frontenac was built between 1892 and 1893 for the Canadian Pacific Railway. Hotels for the rich opened across the country, such as Banff National Parks in 1887. Quebec City's showpiece reflects both French and English cultures. The hotel, named for Louis de Bode, Count of Frontenac, has welcomed royalty, political figures and film stars over the years. As a recognizable Canadian building and a landmark of old Quebec, the Chateau overlooks the St. Lawrence River. Thousands of travelers stroll the Dufferin Terrace at the Chateau's base. The hotel, which is a National Historic Site, was designed by American architect Bruce Price, and this chateau is a throwback to a romantic era when wealthy tourists traveled by rail. Step into a past age and descend the stairs to visit under the Dufferin Terrace. It's the ruins of the colonial Chateau St. Louis, the forts, and the seat of government for New France governors. Samuel de Champlain, founder of Quebec City, occupied the chateau in 1620 and is said to have built the first terrace. He died of a massive stroke there on Christmas Day, 1635. I've taken the uh, funicular elevator down and I'm walking along Rue de Petit Champlain, but I'm in the old Champlain neighborhood. And these streets maintain a mystery and a charm to them that I haven't seen in a long time. But you know me as I'm walking around, I'll show you all the sights. See you later. Visitors flock to Petit Champlain an eclectic neighborhood that is the oldest commercial district in North America. Named after the city's founder, this area is nestled below steep cliffs. Clamber down the breakneck stairs, which were first constructed in the 17th century and continually restored over the years, or take the short ride on the funicular into the district. But as quaint as it is today, 
The lower town has been the scene of military campaigns like the 1759 Siege of Quebec that saw the outlying villages burned and the city bombarded. The 1775 attack saw American patriots repelled by English and French militia. One of three attacks was cut down by cannon fire as invaders stormed today's Rue Petit Champlain. Even as history comes alive in the heritage-laden lower town, it's a must-visit location known for its shopping, restaurants, cafes, and fantastic views of the ever-present Chateau Frontenac. Make your way from the Petit Champlain district into the city's old port and spend time in the market. Baked treats, meats, flowers, and numerous goods await travelers and residents alike. <music> Reflect on heritage at Place Royale, a destination known as the cradle of French civilization in Canada. Champlain built the protective habitation in 1608 in what would later be Lower Town. The founding fort was constructed on the site of today's Notre Dame de Victories Church. A second, fortified site was built by the founder of New France and his men in 1624. Stand on the habitation's foundation and imagine life in this fort in the land that once was centuries ago. The city has changed, but its beating heart remains in Lower Town. Notre Dame de Victories Church was built in 1688 by Francois de Laval as part of the Habitation Square and was later finished in 1723. Today it's a religious site not to be missed. As the sun set, plunging old Quebec into night's cold grip, I returned to Rue Petit Champlain, a lane now devoid of most travelers. The atmosphere was perfect for the city's dark heritage to rule. Take to the streets with excellent costume guides through ghost tours of Quebec. I was nervous, a bit scared, but remained curious about the morbid nature of the tales ahead. With her cloak billowing behind and with the lantern flame wavering grimly, I followed the guide through true stories of murder most foul, sickness, grisly executions, and spectral sightings. The laneways of Quebec City are bustling during the day, but as night takes over, it's these stories that provide the dark take on a now modern Canadian city that I'll remember for years. Built atop Cape Diamond, an easily protected elevated point of land above the river, the Citadel was constructed between 1820 and 1831 in response to the War of 1812. The Citadel, referred to as the Gibraltar of America by Charles Dickens, is part of a long line of changing military fortifications leading back to the city's French regime. Today, the Citadel remains an active military base, home to the Royal 22nd Regiment. I visited the Citadel on Victoria Day when the military conducted a 21-gun salute for the former Queen. The streets of Quebec City's upper town are perfect for exploration. Visit the oldest house in Quebec, dated to 1675, which is now the iconic restaurant O Anciens Canadiens. A place known for quaint restaurants, street paintings and art galleries, the upper district is also home to the Morin Centre, the city's former prison and beautiful 19th century library. Walk through the gates to the beautiful, historic seminary which was founded by Francois de Laval in 1663 to ensure evangelization in the diocese. Laval was the first bishop of New France. Today, the site welcomes students from across the country to the campus of Université de Laval, a post-secondary institution which first opened its doors in 1852. Constructed in 1647, Quebec's Notre Dame Basilica Cathedral the oldest in North America, has stood tall and proud for centuries and was rebuilt after the British bombarded the city in 1759. The cathedral is the burial site of Laval himself, who was canonized as a Roman Catholic saint in 2014, some 300 years after his death. For many, it's a place of deep spiritual significance. As the site of the only holy door outside Europe, Catholic leaders understand the rare ceremony of passing through the portal as moving from this world into the presence of God.
The Seven Years' War, which spanned from 1756 to 1763, encompassed five continents. Clashes in North America led to major consequences for imperial rivals France and Britain. Many in the province of Quebec know this conflict as the War of the Conquest. Quebec City, a greatly desired stronghold, was the heart of New France. With me as your guide, visit the pivotal Plains of Abraham battlefield to learn a vital chapter in Canada's history. During the summer preceding the 1759 battle, the British forces led by Major General James Wolfe heavily bombarded Upper and Lower Quebec City, leaving the town in utter ruins. A reign of further terror began in August and early September to draw French commander Louis-Joseph de Montcalm to battle. 1,400 rural homes and farms were put to the torch. Horrific famine struck the residents. Their city crumbled, blasted by the British-held bastion across the St. Lawrence, but the French would not be drawn into open conflict. Ultimately, it was a cove to the west that was Quebec City's undoing. Unaware that the British climbed the cliffs, the French were shocked at the enemy at their gates on September 13, 1759. The battle commenced that day and was the beginning of the end of French rule. An impulsive Montcalm faced the organized British without reinforcement on the plains. The French army was defeated, but both Wolfe and Montcalm died as a result of the battle. Montcalm, at that point grievously wounded, was brought to the Ursuline nun's chapel. Upon his passing, he was buried in the chapel. The city itself fell under British control. Upon visiting the chapel, I learned Montcalm was exhumed in 2001, some 242 years after he was buried, and returned once again with the men he once led in the graveyard outside the historic General Hospital first built in 1692. Some 1,058 British, French, and First Nations soldiers rest there, laid down for the eternal sleep after the battles fought on Canadian soil during the Seven Years' War. I had to see it for myself. Having set off across the city, I stood in awe at the site now commemorated by the War Memorial for a terrible conflict that led to British control over a burgeoning nation. I will not forget being at Montcalm's tomb, a pivotal figure in history. The monument honoring the location of a still-to-be-determined mass grave was nothing short of unbelievable. James Wolfe's body was returned to England and he's buried at St. Alphage, Greenwich. So I have one word for that experience and that was incredible. I uh, almost didn't want to do a uh, update within the uh, graveyard itself because it just left me speechless. Uh, they have the uh, mass grave for most of the men who passed away during the uh, Seven Years War and that includes the uh, Plains of Abraham. And uh, you know you, you can go to the f field itself and uh, see you know where it took place, and you can go to the museum and see some of the I items. But until you come and see where the men are actually buried, that's when you get the whole picture. And it's not creepy, it's not scary, scary. It's actually just a place of reverence. And uh, until next time, that's going to be it. See you later. Thanks for watching this episode of Traveling with Crushwood. To follow me back to Historic Montreal, click the video on the right. If you'd like to return to Ottawa, click the link on the left. Make sure you like this video. Don't forget to press the bell icon to keep tabs on my episodes and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.